Oh, wow, how's everybody doing? Yeah, nice, uh, sweet, wow, good to be here. Uh, my name is Juliana Rodriguez, which I feel like has way too much personality for someone that looks like if Old Navy became a person, right? <laughs> a high school principal on vacation, like that's my vibe, right? <laughs> Little bit. I asked my mom about it recently. I was like, how'd that name come to be? How did you guys pick that name? And she's like, it's a really common European name. Uh, what happened is I am Italian and your dad is Portuguese. And because of that, we're getting a divorce. <laughs> she's nice, she's nice. <laughs> She told me that we went to the spa uh, just before the pandemic happened. We went to the spa. Has anyone else tried to ruin their life, by the way, and go to the spa with their mom? It's insane. I don't know what it is about being in a hot tub with another person. It just makes you want to overshare about your life while peeling dead skin off your knees, right? <laughs> it's just okay to be gross. Like, the bar is set at humming your favorite song and slowly pissing yourself for whatever reason, right? It's okay at the spa. She also told me this the same day. She looks at me in the eyes from across the hot tub. And she's like, you know when you were born, they used a surgical vacuum to get you out. <laughs> I was like, I came here to relax, not find out the real reason I'm not a hat person, okay? <laughs> Let's take it down a peg, <laughs> you witch. Um, it's interesting, my parents are divorced. Anybody else have low self-esteem? Anybody? It's generally some natural slouchers at the front. Cool, sweet. My parents divorced when I was 14, which is a, a weird age. I don't think you should be a teenager when that happens. You should be like a baby or an adult, ways that you can deal with it emotionally. Because when you're a teenager, your parents just register you as a fully grown adult, right? And they just bring you in on everything. Like my parents actually made me set up their online dating profiles. <laughs> you guys, that was a real thing that happened. I was like, you know what, nothing says divorce, like having to crop each parent out of the same profile picture, right? <laughs> Do a nice little demented swab. You know how psychotic it would to be to turn to your 14-year-old kid and be like, hey, do you mind turning your mom into a dark shadow in this photo? Is that okay with you? Just need to pretend like she didn't come with us to the Mandarin on your birthday. Is that all right? Do you mind doing that? And my mom really wanted to do a good job with her profile, right? So like anytime she matched with a guy, she would call me into the room to have my opinion of the guy. And if you know anything about dating apps, everybody's just like a walking, talking red flag from like Sarnia, Ontario, for some reason. I'm like, this is who you want me to call dad? A guy whose username is Sausage Slammer 69 <laughs> This is the best that you could do. She's like, he's got nice eyes. I'm like, he's wearing a tap out t-shirt. Uh, let's do better. Psychotic. My parents met when they were in high school. They were high school sweethearts, and then they got married in their early 20s. And I didn't realize how big of an issue that would be until I entered my early 20s, and now I have friends that are getting engaged, and it's just very off-putting. Like, I have a friend that's 24 and just got married. I'm like, that's way too young. How do you, like, that's how old I am, and we just stopped playing The Floor is Lava six months ago. You know what I mean? Does grounders not mean anything to you anymore? I didn't even know how to be happy for her. Honestly, my, my word for word response was like, the only time you should marry the same person you've been dating since you were 14 is if you're from a small town, and this is the only cousin you don't look related to, right? <laughs> That's the only time that that should happen. It's weird. I, uh, I couldn't imagine getting married at this point in my life. I couldn't imagine that at all. Dating is hard enough for me as it is. I'm too negative. I'm a very negative person when I date. I don't play along. I'm not fun. I'll give you an example. I was out recently with my friends, and this guy came up to me, and he's like, you seem like you could ruin my life. I'm into it. I was like, you're in your early 20s, and this is 2021. What life do you have for me to ruin? <laughs> I couldn't even play along. I was like, you want me to break into your basement apartment and shred your Harvey's gift cards? Is that <laughs> what you want me to do? Throw away the empty Gatorade bottles you have in your room? Right, I couldn't, I would love to ruin a guy's life in like the 1800s. <laughs> I think we can all agree that would be prime ruining somebody's life, because they all had stuff for you to ruin, you know? Like Carrie Underwood has this song about carving your name into his leather seats. It's like, forget that. I wanna spell my name in flames across your only corn supply, Jebediah. That's <laughs> what I wanna do. Take a brick to the horse-drawn carriage you sculpted by hand and cough on your grandfather on the way out. That's 
really ruining somebody's life. I just looked at this guy the way he was looking at me. I was like, if you want a woman to ruin your life, just ask your mom to take you off her e-transfer auto deposit, right? <laughs> I tied that all together. It's interesting. Uh, something that I've decided to stop doing, guys, I've decided to stop spending an insane amount of money at Victoria's Secret, right? Just because I don't think they actually support women the way that they say they do. All their commercials are just like these models playing with curtains and falling backwards onto mattresses, right? I'm like, I'm a comedian. I can't afford curtains, okay? I think if they really wanted to help women out, their commercials should be a lot more useful, right? Day-to-day -day shit that we all have to deal with. Like, here's how to win an argument about feminism with a guy that owns a Dodge Ram. There you go, right? You get a free item for every Monster Energy bumper sticker he has. That would be sick, right? But instead, all they do is just prey on your insecurity of feeling desirable and then throw the word empowerment over it, right? All their commercials are the same. It's like, just like, come, buy this tight, uncomfortable corset to sleep in. Hopefully it kills you before loneliness does, wench, right? <laughs> it's the best that they can do. I believe that insecurities can be taught, and I think they can be taught through subliminal messages in advertising. Because if you guys have ever been to a small town Ontario, like places that these people don't have cable, those women are so free. You know what I'm talking about? They leave their house, they're like, why should I highlight my jaw? You can just prove I have one when I catch a bird mid-air. Are you kidding? <laughs> uh, you guys have been so much fun. Thank you so much. Thank you.